Hey guys, this is Emmanuel, your body code practitioner out here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Just wanted to do a really quick video on the amazing subject of the inner child. And so, you know, a lot of you guys have maybe noticed that I'm going through this journey of healing, but not only for people like my clients at Coding Alternative, but also for uh, for myself, you know, because reality is, is that, you know, I'm only as good uh, as my next healing. What I mean by that is that, you know, there's every level, there's a new devil. There's different things that we can work on. That's why we read self-development um, all the time. If you're someone who's uh, someone who's eager to read self-development, there may be things that are, um, you know, holding you back and you don't know what you don't know. So I'm looking into more uh, deeper healings within the body code. And one of the things that I found out just recently, probably maybe about two months ago, kind of just dawned on me just because I, I work a lot with uh, Natalie, Natalie Nelson, who's actually um, the daughter of Dr. Brad. But I also, um, I was kind of looking at her sessions and I said, oh wow, inner child work. I wonder what that's all about. And I started, I just kind of looked at it, but I never kind of like really truly acknowledged it and studied it out, asked her questions, nothing. Uh, and then it was recently when I did an interview with Dr. Brad, probably a month ago, maybe you guys remember, I actually found out about uh, the inner child and I was asking about it and I said, hey, do you know about it? Or is, is your daughter going rogue? What's going on? And he says, of course I know about it. So uh, of course she's not going rogue. Um, but what's interesting is that the concept of the inner child is the idea, it's not the idea, actually it's the fact that a lot of us have this um, energy that let's picture your subconscious like it's like the circle, right? And what happens is like maybe one fourth of it's cut off, like it just completely breaks off. And that little piece is because of this inner child that maybe wasn't heard, wasn't listened to, and maybe there's some trauma going on. Um, a lot of, um, there's some clients that I have that uh, perhaps they haven't seen as much movement and shift in regards to their energy, or they know uh, that they have a traumatic childhood. Both of those cases, it's a good good reason to look into the inner child work. And the more and more I notice the, with the clients that I work with, a lot of people have uh, a happy, what they call unhappy inner child. And so I wanted to dive into it myself, but I wanted to have a professional look into myself to see what they find. So this is why I'm wearing my, my Minnie Mouse shirt. That's why my hair is a little messed up because, you know, my inner child would like that. What else, what else am I kind of um, fixing up in my life? Another thing that I'm working on is just I was working outside making phone calls and I just started, you know, I'm just talking to clients and um, I haven't been taking video calls just because Natalie, which I'll share, share with you what I found here, she actually said that I'm neglecting my inner child by not going out to nature more. But I'm like, well, I'm working a lot though. So I was like, how could I combine both? Well, what if I was just on my phone and I was outside of nature? Like today, this morning I was outside, uh, maybe in the afternoon I might be near the pool area. And I just wanna just, you know, I, I remember being as a child, always being outside and always enjoying, you know, skateboarding or always enjoy just anything that's outside. I would barely come home, just probably to eat food and then go back outside again. So she was spot on the fact that you know, I have been working home-based businesses for a while now, but just because I work from home uh, doesn't mean I'm going out in nature. And so I want to respect my inner child. I want to do that. So anyway, so what's really interesting about this inner child is that it has its own separate files, separate trapped emotions, sort of separate heart walls that's not connected to the adult version. So a lot of the things that we're, we're dealing with is like, for example, um, we're actually in some ways um, having an inner child act up in our adult version of ourselves. What I'm trying to say is that a lot of the things you're doing right now, whether it's you're in a very abusive relationship or in a job you don't like, or there's just different things, it's almost like this inner child inside of you, because you left it back there, um, is like it was neglected or not listened to or things like that, can um, manifest in adult symptoms. Um, sometimes even healings that you would typically get normally, but you're not getting for some reason in energy healing could be because of a frustrated child or a neglected child. Because what if, for example, you do heal completely everything like that, you'll actually forget the second time your inner child. So that's why it purposely stagnates your healing because it says, like, okay, well, if you're working with an energy healer, at some point they might mention that you have an unhappy inner child inside of you that needs to be noticed. So. I, I noticed that's that's very, very interesting. Those are, again, the two reasons why you want to look into inner child. So if you know you've had a traumatic childhood, and I always tell people, you know, my parents 
they they were very very successful they were doctors everything like that now they were always gone all the time i didn't receive massive amounts of abuse from home but i noticed that there was some neglect going on in regards to they were always at work so i was at home and there was this lady that took care of the house i remember one time i almost called her my mother and my mother almost threw her out of the house and but then you want to look at it like what really was happening the reason why i was calling her mother is because i saw her more than my own mother and my mother knew that and so it kind of gave her it really made my eye, my mother's eyes red and she was really upset that I would even say like, hey mom, blah, blah, blah. And she says, that's not your mom. I'm your mom. But it kind of was a wake up call to her that she works a lot. My mother was a workaholic and so were my father. My father was as well. And they worked a lot, but obviously to maintain their lifestyle, what they were doing. And, and plus they loved, they loved helping patients. So I wanted to talk to you guys about Usually when, after you do a lot of energy healing work, either with myself or someone else or another body code practitioner, it's actually a good idea to kind of start tapping into the inner child and seeing if you do have an unhappy one. And I wanted to mention to you kind of some things that Natalie found in me. I want to make myself very vulnerable here. Um, but she left me with two exercises. She says, get outside in nature and have play time with others. It's kind of funny. She says, don't even, not even just go by yourself outside, but hang out with people outside and, and, and play with them. And then um, the second thing she told me to do is to write a list of things I like to do as a kid and do more of those things. And so those are the two things that she came up with. But let me tell you that when she first started to connect with me energetically long distance, uh, she had some what they call resistance. And so resistance is the, the child going like, whoa, who is this person? Now, Natalie and I have worked with her maybe two or three times. Uh, I've worked with another friend of mine named Carson who's worked on me quite a bit. I think if Carson would have worked on me, I think there would have been less resistance. He could have just probably immediately connected with my inner child. So it's almost like you as a healer, you're walking up to this adult version and this little inner child's inside. You guys have seen those, um, that, um, those the, the monument of two people facing away from each other and then the little two kids kind of like touching hands. So picture like every time a practitioner works with you, the child's kind of like inside, they're going like, who's this adult guy? Oh, whoa, look at all these energies leaving this person's body. Okay, that feels pretty good. It didn't affect me too much, but um, it seems like my adult self appreciated this healer. And then he, he comes again a week later and he says, oh, there goes those energies again. So I guess they meet every Tuesday, <laughs> you know? And so that child becomes accustomed to the healer. And then after a while, the healer can be like, hey, can I connect with your inner child? It would be higher uh, probability of no resistance if it was a consistent thing. And then the child gets used to this person because they can trust it. It's almost like coming to a session with your little boy and the little boy seeing the psychologist let's say over and over and over again all of a sudden the little boy's like okay i'm used to this guy if he wants to talk to me now i know him and so that's kind of why there was so there was some resistance for example there was a psychic trauma that um, was worthless and worry from age 21 and that uh, didn't allow me to for her to connect with my child also feeling unsupported at age 10. So she released both of those and then all of a sudden they're connected. Um, both practitioners told me that it's very, very important to kind of introduce yourself and say, you know, even in your mind while you're connecting with the inner child to say, hey, my name is Emmanuel. I'm a body code practitioner. I've been working with your adult self. I wanna see how I can help the inner child. I wanna see how I can help you. I'm really here just to make you feel happy. And if there's any like emotions that you feel consistently, let me know. And you can actually go into the emotion code chart and ask, you know, what are some emotions you continually feel all the time that you consistently feel? There's children, for example, that you know, or your child, that they feel frustrated easily or they feel sad easily. So technically you can ask your inner child to see how old are you, number one. Could there be multiple children inside your body where there was multiple traumas? Yes. Uh, they would call it in psychology like, you know, uh, you know, multiple disorder, but really multiple personality disorder, but it could just be inner children that are inside of you, energetic child inside of you, that they all have different times where they got stuck or there was so much trauma that they stayed that age. And so you have to see if you have one child or do you have more children or who wants to talk and who, you know, it's, it's a kind of a complicated thing at first, but after a while, from what I've heard from practitioners, you can start going in there and communicating uh, with the child very easily. Like, you know, you can, and they start trusting you and you can kind of speak their language and so she removed a cord uh, from me. Uh, I believe it was connected to my sister. It was to different uh, chakras, you know, and, uh, and that, I thought that was very interesting. So we, we, um, we 
basically had the disease, uh, it was attached to your throat and to her solar plexus. And so we removed it. It really didn't help out. Uh, and so uh, the second thing was there was an imbalance in my throat chakra. By the way, I was super shy when I was a kid. So I, w I would not surprise that I had an imbalance in the throat chakra as a child. I also had a psychic trauma as well, a betrayal and shock at age four, which I didn't, I don't remember, but my subconscious did remember. So we released that. I also found a saboteur uh, weapon. It was actually a dagger in my lower right neck from around 13, 14. I was definitely very self-abusive around that time, but also um, I was going through a lot of bullying around that time. Um, also, uh, there was also a programming, some type of program where you're like, it's not safe to be free. And I remember noticing that my father, um, in some instances, or my mother, they're very controlling people. But in a nice way, though, I mean, they were, they were kind of strict, you know. And so I didn't feel safe to completely be myself. And so she released some psychic traumas there. I had an allergy, kind of like the idea of my own value, that it matters. I had a hidden heart wall, which was worthlessness at age three. I had a trapped immune, um, a heart wall emotion, also of humiliation that was inherited from my father's father. So she was just working through and finding all these different imbalances. And uh, also um, I had this uh, emotional communication kind of surfacing where I felt you know, sadness, feeling ignored, abandoned, worthless. So we released a heart wall emotion of betrayal at age two. And so that's, those are different things that she found. And so I, I really think this could be very, very powerful work. Uh, a lot of you who are out there uh, who are, um, maybe have, and you know you've had some child traumatic issues, uh, inner child work could be really amazing. Now I highly recommend working, whenever you work with someone, you always start off with the heart wall first, and then second, and then that, that's the trauma that you have around your heart. Um, you know, it could be happening because of abandonment, relationship issues, someone passes away, work stress. There's so many reasons why you could have heart trauma and there's these energies that are in front of it. But afterwards, you can do other work like open up your body energetically for relationships or open up your body for, um, for wealth, all that good stuff. But then after all, you might want to just check in and ask your practitioner and be like, hey, I'm curious, do I have an unhappy inner child? Find out the age of it and start communicating after your body starts getting used to this practitioner working with you. And so hopefully, uh, hopefully your mind expands a little bit that really there's a lot more work to do, not only on the adult self, but on the child self. And me as your healer, as your body code practitioner, I'm not going to leave my inner child neglected, hence the mini mouse shirts, hence I'm making changes and making phone calls outside in nature. I'm going to take care of my inner I'm still making that list uh, of things that I used to appreciate when I was a child, which is actually writing poetry. And guess what? I'm actually, I just started a band recently called Us Without Them. So I'm obviously not neglecting that. So if you're on Facebook, look up Us Without Them. That's our our band that I started. And I really believe that uh, me going back into poetry is not neglecting my inner child self. I used to write haikus when I was six years old, seven years old. I have journals of poetry. So I'm diving in there again to just be able to express myself. Uh, probably because I didn't feel free at home, you know? And so that's, um, so I'm definitely, I'm not going to neglect myself. The healer uh, needs to be healed as well. So hopefully you learned something pretty interesting here in this um, this amazing discovery uh, of the inner child that needs work and that not only the the adult self, but the inner child, once you have those, that that fraction of your subconscious gets connected with the with the big circle of your subconscious, you can you know feel a lot more peace. You can your intuition will be higher. Um, your healing will start progressing quicker, and so it's something to definitely look into. So uh, if you'd like more information, go ahead and write down a comment on the, on my YouTube page. Uh, then I'll be able to contact you and uh, feel free to share. You know what's you know any thoughts that come into your mind when I talk when I spoke about this. Go ahead and write some comments down there. I'd love to uh, answer any question I can. I can uh, find. So with that, uh, this is your emotion code practitioner, your body code practitioner out here in Las Vegas and look forward to communicating with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.